You know, the world is constantly on fire, both literally and metaphorically. The environment's getting worse, we're running out of clean water, rent keeps going up, and there's 300 new cases of Ligma and its more devastating variant, Sigma, every single day. But no one's talking about the real issue here, chair quality. If you're watching this video, there's a high chance that you sat down before, and with the privilege of sitting comes a disappointment of a bad chair. I should know, I used to have a gaming chair. I lucked out in finding a decent one at my local stables, but others aren't so lucky. I mean, look at this poor sap here. He's using a dining chair while playing around a siege. <sighs> Breaks my heart. That's why I decided to spend the last three weeks giving back to the world by developing this game about making furniture. Real, honest to God, fake vir virtual furniture. There's hope for the world and I intend to add to it. So before one has a chair, they have to think about what goes into making one. So everyone knows you need an inventory to start with, so we gotta make that. You also need an industrial list to ensure that your chair doesn't remain a figment of your hallucin, I mean imagination, so you need to create some sort of chair making factory. And to tie it all together, you need some kind of user interface to put your inventory and junk into said factory to make it output a chair. And then you need the actual chair because that's kind of important into um, owning a chair. So once I had all those pesky details done, I hopped into one of my favorite design slash organization apps, Figma, more specifically its flowchart app, FigGen. I mean, look at these flowcharts, the professionalism, the detail. There's three whole colors right there, I think, I don't know, I'm reading a script right now. These charts were probably the only reason why I was able to make this whole system work. There's a lot of moving parts between them and having them all laid out in a flowchart format makes them a lot easier to tie down. So once I had the charts down, I hopped over to Figma, the design side of this app, to get a rough out design of what I wanted my in-game UI to look like. And spoiler alert, it looks nothing like this. So once I had all my planning done, I hopped into Rider to start coding. So a big part of crafting is making sure you can keep track of data moving from one place to another and then making more data. In this case, it was moving the player's items from their inventory to the UI of their inventory to the crafting menu and finally the creation of the chair. The main problem with that is that I only set up my player's inventory component to move text and not the type of ingredient it is or even the material it would add to the chair when crafting. Luckily, structs exist. A struct is like a class that only holds variables, so I created one on the pickup to make sure that I could take in values for what type of item it was, its name, and the material it adds to the furniture. One quick compile later, and boom, now we got an easily accessible packet of info to pass around where it's needed. Next was adding in the factory itself. Now see, this could have been quick if I actually knew what I was doing. I got about two hours into creating the factory class and adding in all the functionality for making furniture, but then I realized something. This is a game where a player builds multiple things, and a factory is only one thing. I'm now realizing that I've quintupled my work by creating a class that only does one thing. So I finally pulled up my big boy pants and learned how to delete a class, and after 20 minutes of triple checking to make sure that the project still worked and I didn't corrupt it beyond repair, I created a more generalized building class I could use to make any kind of building I wanted. So using that, we create the factory class, slap all the necessary functions in, create a blueprint, and done. Just kidding, it's, it's gonna get worse later. But in the moment, I thought it was done, so I moved on to UI. Now in the last video, I said the next devlog would come out in a couple of weeks. Most sane people would assume a couple means two, while some degenerates would think it means more. And after realizing how much work I had for the UI side of stuff, I took the degen route. Looking back, UMG, or Unreal Motion Graphics, makes it creating UI pretty easy since it leverages the same system as blueprints. But I wasn't about to take the easy way out like a chump, I wanted my life to be difficult. I started by trying to see what I could figure out myself, which was nothing, so I turned over to watch some tutorials on how to get an idea of how everything should fit together. I was lucky enough that Unreal tutorial legend Matthew Wadstein and Epic themselves had made some pretty awesome tutorials on not only how to use UMG, but also how to use it to make an inventory system. I was able to get drag and drop set up pretty quickly, and then work on the spaghetti logic I needed to make sure that the player's inventory and the UI could talk to each other to get it working. The amount of blueprints needed to get the inventory update alone was giving me some major performance anxiety. Not that one, you creeps. I had my frame counter on for the entirety of this part to make sure no major drops occurred when the player picked up something, because I think there was like nine for loops I made to make this happen. Surprisingly, nothing really changed, so I kept pushing until I got the inventory working and updating whenever the player picked up a nine. Once that was done, I added the crafting menu to the screen for when I'd finally get to use it. Now, for what I'm telling you, you're probably thinking that the programming side took the most time, but I'm here to tell you that it was actually putting stuff on the screen, the nine coding part, no thinking required, drag and drop portion of all of this. But again, I wanted to make my life really difficult. Back when I was using Unity, I really hated this. I could never get UI working and it was always just like weird squish mess. I still hate it, but uh, it was a little less painful and unreal. We lost a lot of good inventory slots along the way, but their sacrifice led us to have the masterpiece we see today. Told you it wasn't gonna look like the Figma design. 
So with the UI completed, the factory logic done, it was time to finally create a chair. When designing the crafting system, I thought it'd be really cool that the furniture the player can make would be based on the materials they put in. So I created this chair on stream with it being broken up into three different components. The frame, the legs, and the cushion. That way you knew what piece you were changing so you can make a whole bunch of different unique combinations. I got the chair imported and set it up in the blueprints so the pieces can be referenced by the functions used to assemble it. I then added the factory blueprint so I could actually make the chairs. I also didn't create a factory model so the chair factory is a chair within itself. Alright, everything is hooked up so all I have to do is press this button and... Wait, why is everything red? What do you mean I chose the wrong class? I swear I made this sure it was the right class when I was doing this. Why is it the building class, not the factory class? Okay, let me try rebuilding it and it's it's still broken. Why why is it doing this? I rebuilt the project like five times when this was happening. And it turns out it wasn't even me. Unreal has this bug where it reparents classes without you knowing it, so everything that was supposed to be a factory reference turned out to be a building class reference. So once I finally got over that hurdle, I placed in all the materials I can need and I did it. I made a chair, a really nice blocky chair, little croissant holes in the side and a foam seat, just like mom used to make. All right, crafting system complete. Well, kind of, you can't really remove anything from your inventory yet, so you can make unlimited of any kind of furniture, but the, the principle is still there. Doing all of this gave me a real appreciation for any game that includes an inventory or crafting system. These are weirdly difficult to make, but making this was one of the biggest hurdles of the entire game, and now that it's essentially complete, we're one step closer to actually releasing something. I think I'm gonna tackle base building next, and after getting the system complete, I'm feeling a little bit of little confidence, so we're gonna see how that pans out over the next couple of weeks. And as per usual, like if you liked this devlog, subscribe if you really liked it, and dislike if you hated it. I feed off of the feedback either way. Thanks for watching, I hope to see y'all in the next one. Peace.